Hi, uh, my name is Keshav. I'm a PhD student at Stanford University, and today I'll be talking about DSP, the Demonstrate, Search, Predict, Programming Model, and Compiler. Uh, this is joint work with Omar and a bunch of other folks uh, from Stanford. So what we've observed over the last couple years is that large language models are fluent synthesis machines. And what I mean by this is they're able to generate very convincing looking text across a wide variety of domains. Uh, but the problem with this is that these large language models are not yet reliable, grounded, end-to-end -end systems. So we can take a look at an example here. Uh, if we ask the question, when was Stanford University founded, and we ask a, a large language model you can find online this question, it'll give the wrong answer. Uh, instead, of, uh, instead of 1885, it's saying 1891. Similarly, if we ask about the Colbert model, which is a system we developed here, it's uh, developed at Stanford, uh, it'll say that it was actually developed by Salesforce, Salesforce Research. Um, and the same thing for questions about programming. So to deal with this lack of robustness, there are a number of different foundation models and techniques for using these foundation models that have emerged uh, very recently. So within the space of just large language models, uh, there's many different strategies for prompting these models more effectively. So this ranges from the baseline of zero-shot instruction to few-shot prompting, the more sophisticated chain of thought prompting, introducing agents or calling external tools like ChatGPT's plugins, if you're familiar. Um, and if you want to update your model weights, you could start fine-tuning your model. Uh, but this raises questions of you know, what data do you use, what base model, and what strategies or algorithms do you apply to actually uh, fine-tune your model parameters. Beyond large language models, there's also different uh, types of models, like retrieval models, which is a big focus of our work at Stanford, uh, task-specific models, like models specialized for summarization or translation. Uh, and then there's models for different modalities, like vision or speech. Uh, so for simplicity, I'm going to focus on large language models and retrieval models for this talk, but the concepts I talk about can be generally applicable to other types of foundation models as well. So in order to build robust systems using foundation models, we often want to use pipelines where we can have different foundation models interacting with each other. Uh, and the reason for this is pipelines help us break down complex problems into more manageable subproblems, and we can delegate each of these subtasks to models that are specifically adapted for uh, that particular subtask. So I'll use this example to kind of demonstrate what I mean. So here's a question, how many stories are in the castle David Gregory inherited? And we want to use foundation models to answer this question. If we take the naive approach of just feeding this directly into a language model, uh, we'll find that it gives the incorrect answer of three stories here. So the next approach you might try is using a retrieval model to kind of look up a passage that might have some relevant information about this question. Uh, but unfortunately, this would also give the wrong uh, answer because uh, the question is not so simple that it can be answered with just a single retrieval lookup. So finally, we come to the more sophisticated pipeline here, where instead of directly trying to answer the question, we can ask a language model to give us a sub-question that can help answer maybe a piece of the original question. So here, that language model is generating a sub-question, what castle did David Gregory inherit? And now we can do a lookup uh, using this uh, sub-question, find a relevant passage, again, have the language model generate another sub-question, uh, and repeat until we finally converge at the right answer of five stories. So this looks great in theory, but it turns out building effective pipelines isn't actually that easy in practice. So the reason for this is that it's challenging to figure out how to connect and optimize all of these pipeline components together. Uh, every change we make to a specific subtask requires additional pipeline-specific training data and perhaps a lot of engineering effort to kind of re-architect the pipeline to however we want to change our task description. So what we would like to have is some way of uh, abstracting away the system design part of this uh, from specifying the, the high-level task we want to do. Um, and for that, we want to use a programming model uh, that allows us to interface with these foundation model pipelines in, in, at a high-level uh, abstract way. In particular, we want an abstraction that gives you control over the information flow. And once we have that, we can also use a compiler, uh, which will help us improve our task, disc uh, our task pipelines uh, and uh, enable e effective prompting, fine-tuning, and joint optimization. So I'll go through uh, our proposal for this, which is DSP, the DSP programming model. 
So a helpful analogy here is to think of DSP like PyTorch, but instead of having layers, uh, we have foundation models. And instead of having tensors, we have uh, text objects that we pass around between foundation model components. So DSP is built on top of three key primitives. Uh, the first is demonstrate. Uh, the goal of the demonstrate primitive is to express how, uh, how our pipeline should behave and what constraints we want to impose on top of our pipeline. The search primitive is, uh, the goal of the search primitive is to break down our problems into uh, more tractable subproblems and help us look for useful information in, uh, for example, knowledge corpuses. And then the predict primitive helps us make use of the information we find and helps us do things like double check our work, uh, et cetera. So once we have all these primitives, we can then delegate to the DSP compiler uh, uh, ways of automatically improving our pipelines um, and do this in an effective and efficient way. So to give you an example of how DSP works, uh, we'll use the Boleyn multi-hop question answering system, which is another system we built at Stanford. Uh, this was a very robust and accurate system, but it took a, many months of design and implementation effort in order to actually realize it. So now what I'll show you today is how we can replicate uh, a system like Boleyn using just a few lines of DSP code. So here we have uh, our example, DSP, uh, our Boleyn function written in DSP. So you can see it takes as input a DSP example, which is very simply just a dictionary that has uh, some key value pairs that you can define. Uh, so as an example of this, uh, uh, we can ha introduce into our x value a context, where a context is just a list of relevant passages that we'll use to help us do our multi-hop question answering. And we can construct this uh, for loop here, uh, where we're iterating over uh, some number of hops, in this case, four hops. Um, and in each hop, the first step is going to be generating a search query. And I'll, I'll talk about how DSP interprets the search query uh, type here in a second. Uh, but once we have our search query, we can find some relevant passages that help answer that uh, search query. Uh, in this case, we're finding three relevant passages. Then we can generate a search summary uh, based on those passages and append that to our context. Once we're done iterating, we can finally generate a short answer that helps us uh, answer the original question and return that. So the thing that has not been discussed yet is you know, how do we specify these types to DSP, uh, for example, a search query or a search summary. Um, so DSP has this mechanism for specifying uh, user-defined types. Uh, so for example, we can have a context, which is our list of passages. Uh, we can, of course, have question and answer types. And then we can combine these types together into a signature, which is kind of our uh, description of the program behavior. So now moving on to the DSP compiler, uh, the high level goal of this is to be able to take an existing DSP program, as well as a few examples, which could be labeled or unlabeled, and produce an improved DSP program. And I'll talk about uh, you know, what that might look like in the next few slides. Uh, so very simply, we can invoke the DSP compiler uh, by passing in the program and our, our list of examples. So let's see how the compiler works using the Boolean program we just wrote a few slides ago. Uh, to help us with this, let's say we have a list of examples. In this case, I have one labeled example here uh, the, the, for the question, which award did the first book of Gary Zukov receive, and the corresponding answer. Um, so what we can see in the DSP program is that there's these uh, primitives like DSP generate, which are telling uh, DSP you know, what behavior do we expect uh, this pipeline to, to follow. And the DSP compiler can examine this behavior and figure out how to generate an optimized version of it. So suppose you had no examples, uh, then maybe the simplest thing you can do is just have this zero shot uh, question answering uh, set up where you have uh, a prompt that includes some context and it's even introduced some chain of thought rationale here. Um, and now you have a, a nice like zero shot prompting system uh, based on your original pipeline. But where DSP really shines is if you do have some of these uh, labeled examples, uh, what we can do is generate uh, few shot prompts that are fully annotated according to the specifications of your pipeline. And what's uh, cool about this is that you, we never specified any labeled examples for what a search query is or what a search summary is, but the DSP compiler is able to automatically produce these annotated examples uh, so that you can get more robust results from your pipeline. 
And now let's say you deploy this pipeline into the wild and it comes back, uh, uh, you come back with a lot of uh, queries that people have inputted into your system. They may not be labeled, but that's okay. What we can do is take our, our small set of labeled examples alongside uh, the unlabeled examples uh, from the wild, and we can actually train a model uh, that uh, replicates the behavior of your pipeline um, in a more targeted way. So for example, you could take uh, an OpenAI DaVinci model and fine tune it for your specific pipeline, or you can take a local T5 model uh, that's much smaller than DaVinci and have it almost replicate the performance of the very large OpenAI model, uh, but obviously uh, it would be much cheaper to serve and you wouldn't have to compromise too much of the accuracy. So to conclude, uh, you know, why I use DSP? Uh, first, it's a clear path for data-driven development. So it combines this aspect of prototyping very complex pipelines and control over what each stage in the pipeline is doing. Um, it, it's a very familiar interface for people who write code, uh, but instead of using uh, you know, PyTorch layers, we're using these foundation mo models as components. Uh, DSP is truly modular. It isolates the system design aspect of designing these complex pipelines from low-level prompting and fine-tuning concerns. And the DSP compiler uh, introduces automatic optimizations that benefit all programs. So even if you make a small tweak to one, to one stage in your pipeline, you can simply recompile uh, without having to re-architect the system from scratch. Uh, DSP also works really well in practice. Uh, so we evaluated it along a number of different data sets and compared against uh, approaches like a vanilla LM, so in this case, uh, GPT 3.5, uh, or some retrieval augmented generation baselines. And what we found is that across the board, DSP outperforms these baselines. Um, so all in all, we find that DSP is very effective and hopefully very useful to all of you who are working with uh, these foundation model uh, components. Um, feel free to check it out on GitHub at this link. Uh, we have a couple different uh, notebooks that will help you get started with DSP. Some of them don't even require uh, having an open AI key. You can just run it all uh, locally. Uh, so with that, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you.